Umar Johnson, I think that Umar Johnson is quite possibly one of the most entertaining people on the internet. I think that Umar Johnson is one of the most entertaining people on the internet. He keeps us chock filled with thoughts and comments, concerns, disagreements, things that I agree with him on, things that I disagree with him on. You guys know that I'm an equal accountability partner, which means that I'm willing to be objective so that I break these conversations down in real time that I have not seen but seen a clip of just to make sure that it's something that I want to review on the platform. I break these conversations down in real time in order to be able to give you the insight and information that allows for you to be able to level up financially and move differently from a character perspective in your life. And so Umar Johnson recently weighed in on HBCUs, which we all know if you pay attention to what's going on over with Deion Sanders leaving Jackson State. Uh, I did an interview with Charleston White last night and uh, we was cooking up in the studio and then we went live with Lex. Make sure y'all subscribe to uh, the Lux Lounge. Shout, shout out to Lux Lounge. Shout out to Lux. She is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, we had a lot of fun just joking around and not taking ourselves too seriously and talking about relationships last night. Impromptu stream. Uh, make sure y'all subscribe to her channel. Her, her first video is launching at 7 p.m. Eastern tonight. So that's scheduled to come out. And I think that she's going to be awesome. Make sure you subscribe to her channel. It's dope. If you go to my channel... And then you go to scroll down and look at the videos. You can see a link to her channel is there and it's going to be awesome. But thank you, Peter M. Investor. He said, I like your vision for content creation, publishing, and distribution. Shh. That's Bag Chaser's game. But anyways, Umar Johnson weighed in on HBCUs and why the black community specifically does not support historically black colleges. And somebody sent me this video and I said, hey, before we get into the Kyrie Irving situation, because Nike has been all over the news, uh, let's mine out this conversation and let's talk about Umar Johnson and see what it is that he has to say. So let's jump into this and then we're going to jump right into Kyrie Irving situation and we're going to break that down right after. All right. Went to HBCUs, but you sent your children to PWIs because you wanted to imitate your slave master. I'm keeping it real. I'm keeping it real. I'm keeping it real. Why do he repeat things three times? I understand the reinforcing and saying it twice, but I don't understand why he, he, he says it three times. And I don't understand why people use extreme words in order to emphasize their point. Nobody is your slave master. If you work for somebody and nobody is forcing anything to do, anybody to do anything, even if you want to talk about systematic oppression, that means that there's things in place to guide you, but it does not remove your free will to be able to do what you want to do. Um, it's just like these extreme words. And I don't always disagree with what he's saying as far as how he's breaking things down or the mindset behind why people do what they do. But it's the extreme words that sell you a point or a narrative that gets you riled up and gets you to make decisions emotionally. But let's continue to see what he got to say. So the black shout community to, shout, shout out to my first moderator, Sir Shy, says some of these HBCUs are like super high school. Man, let me tell you, YouTube is like high school, bro. Shout out to you though, big dog. Has not supported the HBCU, and that HBCUs have not involved themselves in the black community the way that they should have. So the black community failed the HBCU, and the HBCU failed the black community which HBCUs are then funded by and largely supported by the federal government, as illustrated by Trump, uh, given the biggest donation to HBCUs or the biggest level of funding to HBCUs when he was in office, and then y'all voted him out. And then lately I heard that Biden, which I can't substantiate this argument, but everybody has been communicating about it lately, is that Biden actually cut funding that he's giving over to HBCUs, which other institutions don't depend on the federal government largely in order for them to be able to shore up their finances to ensure they're given the best education and be able to recruit the best students. They have endowments, alumni make donations, they have great football programs that bring in revenue and national relevance uh, and, and TV contracts and things like that. And so everything always comes back down to the money. It's not just about the black community supporting the HBCUs. It's not my responsibility because I've never went there. 
It's the responsibility of the alumni and those that worked for HBCUs to market themselves more effectively, whether it be through sports or to their alumni, to ensure that they're getting the donations that they're supposed to get in order to make sure that the next generation is getting the right education. When did it become the black community's responsibility to support anything and anyone outside of the people that they're responsible for, such as their family? Shout out to A. Bree. A. Bree says, um, I've been thinking about joining your Patreon. Would it benefit a person that wants to make a comic to make a comic and get up, get it up off the ground? I'm guessing that you're asking, would it benefit a person that wants to become a comic? My Patreon, and let me just break this down before we get back into this. Thank you for the super chat. I'm always going to answer all of the super chats. Uh, my Patreon is for people that are looking to level up and make the right decision to look at things from a business perspective, right? So, for example, if you are a person in corporate America, it teaches you not only how to manage your money effectively, but also how to network effectively, how to interview correctly, how to continue to level up, and then take the resources that you get because we all are are earning resources, we all trying to market ourselves effectively, we all trying to understand how to network effectively, it shows you how to take the resources and where to put it in order to make sure that you have the financial wherewithal to live the life that you want to live afterwards. It also emphasizes work ethic. It also emphasizes how to manage your calendar and your schedule more effectively. It also emphasizes how to surround yourself with a group of people in your community that allows for you to be able to be more successful. So is it specifically tailored towards people that are looking to become comics? No. But is it tailored towards people that show you how to look at things from a business perspective, whether you're going into com uh, comedy or you're going into corporate America or you're looking at things uh, as far as trying to become an entrepreneur? Yes. So if you're looking for insight on how to level up as a comic, and I'm just trying to parse through what it is that you wrote, or as a becoming a comedian, it does not show you how to be a comedian. It, to it, it does talk about how um, you need to level up in other ways once you become successful, regardless of your profession. So just being honest and transparent, you're not going to find any information about being a comedian inside of the Patreon. But you will find a group of people in the network that uh, are thousands and thousands strong that can probably put you in a position and help you get to where you need to go, depending on what your goals are. So let's continue. Now, with all due respect, because I've spoken at many of them, with all due respect, I've spoken at many of them. A lot of the presidents at these HBCUs are bourgeoisie elitist snobs who could care less about the future of those institutions. I'm just being honest. I'm just being honest. No disrespect. No disrespect, but a lot of the presidents of the historically black colleges and universities in this country are talented 10th, coon luminati, upper class, bourgeoisie Negroes with no imagination, no ideas, and no genuine concern for the future of the college that they are leading. And so let me break this down a little bit because um, I agree with them to an extent and then I disagree with them on other points. But I like to let it play enough for me to be able to parse through um, what it is that he's trying to communicate because sometimes they substantiate the argument and add additional context. A, I don't like the fact that because you have a difference of opinion does not necessarily mean that you understand how finances and how business work, especially on an academic level. Or even when it comes to being a director, a president, a vice president of anywhere, whether it's a company or a major university, right? If he was so smart and he was so wise to look at things from a business perspective, he would have his school up and running after 10 years of begging for donations, hit the cash app, right? I also don't like the fact that because he has a difference of opinion or a difference of a, a, a perspective, he starts to say things like calling them a coon. There's nothing more disrespectful than a person that says that they're for the black community and starts to call people a coon. Because it's no different in my opinion and it's actually infinitely worse than a white person calling you an N-I-G-G-E-R with that hard R on it. I don't understand why people say that. You disagree with your own mama, but that don't mean that you call her a bitch. Sometimes we walk away from our family. It don't mean that we don't have love for them. Unless they did something to you personally, I don't understand how people just automatically label somebody that they don't agree with a coon or a name. 
I don't understand that. That's not love. Now, if somebody come at you and you come at them with equal or much more forceful uh, things to say to them or about them, that's a completely different conversation. But you, you know no sentiment. It's, it's like he's placing them all in a box and he's saying that all university presidents that are from HBCUs automatically think this way. Now, do a lot of these people operate from an elitist perspective or do they are they more selfish when it comes to being successful, such as what most of us are? We would not be doing the job if they weren't paying us the type of money that they was paying us. We can't substantiate that, but we can make an assumption, yes. Yes. For example, was it smart? Was it smart? And did the university president of Jackson State do the best, best job possible within the budget constraints that they have to be able to recruit the best coach, place visibility, and then create a better atmosphere in which their students was able to thrive at Jackson State, I have to say that they did a great job marketing themselves and hiring the best available coach at the best price, 100%. They put Jackson State on the map when nobody was thinking about Jackson State. So for me to make the assumption that a university president or all these university presidents that work at the HBCUs aren't passionate or they don't care and they only look in the line of their pockets, that's a little bit short-sighted. It's a little bit short-sighted. And please stop calling these people coons because they worked very, very hard to get to where they at. And you don't know what their sentiment is towards the people that they're helping within these universities. Because I will tell you, a lot of people that work in academia a lot of them make the sacrifice to stay there because they can be getting a way bigger bag in corporate America or at a private institution. And that's a fact. But see, because people say that they pro-black don't mean that they understand how to look at things from a business perspective and then bring that back into real life so that they can make an informed decision. Am I wrong, brothers and sisters? My HBCU grads, am I wrong? I'm talking to my HBCU grads. My HBCU grads, am I wrong? Is it not true that the college you went to had a bougie-ass black president who was so, so bougie that the last thing they were thinking about was how they could get into the community on a grassroots level and develop relationships that would sustain. So the university president is too bougie. That's like going to the bar and seeing a girl that look really good and because she don't necessarily want to talk to you you say that she is she is stuck up bitch. It's no different than a dude that's emotional because a girl don't want to talk to her. And then he call her a bitch on his way out the door because she she politely rejected him. It's a dumb argument. How can you automatically say that the university president is stuck up and bourgeois? So that they don't want to co uh, connect with the community on a grassroots level. their institutions long after their presidency. Am I wrong? So dumb. Am I wrong? Yes, you're wrong. See, if I'm president of a HBCU, and one time that was a dream of mine, but now I have to do the FDMG thing. Thank you, one Jesus, for him not being a president of a HBCU and running that into the ground because we still ain't seen one student cross the pole. Listen. If you was 10 years old when Dr. Umar Johnson first started the FDBG, gay, B, G, C, D, U school, you probably, you 20 now. If you had a dream as an elementary school kid of going to the Frederick, Frederick Douglass Epiphany Church Pastoral College or whatever the hell he got going on over there, still hitting the cash app, then you in college now and you still looking at him and he's still telling you to hit the cash app. One time I wanted to be president of an HBCU. I really did. Of course, I'm too revolutionary. They'll never allow me because they're white funded institutions, right? That's okay. I'm going to build my own college. So it's okay. But brothers and sisters, three things all HBCU presidents should be doing. And if you are an HBCU student, please go to your president and board of trustees. Did y'all know that the majority of the donations that go to these charities that y'all donate to, 95% of them go to their salary and uh, do things as far as a functional level and it's not actually benefiting the people? Let's continue. Go to your president and to your bougie board of trustees. 
Go to your president and to your bougie board of trustees at your college or university. First, first of all, I thought that he was building a, a school, and now he's building a college. Is this going to be accredited? Or is this like you're going to get your esthetician license? I don't know. And ask them, why do we not have a charter school or an independent school attached to this college or university? Very Shout out to Cardell. Make sure y'all uh, give a round of applause to the new Patreon members uh, that's joined today. We like, we love it. We appreciate it. And thank you for continuing to align with the tribe. Make sure when y'all work through y'all, y'all way through the videos, don't just work through the entertainment videos. Also work your way from the bottom to the top. Um, and then join the Discord, which is in any of the most recent videos, the link to the Discord. Let's continue. Very few HBCUs are without education programs. Very few HBCUs are without education programs. Very few HBCUs are without education programs. So why aren't the HBCUs building independent schools or opening charter schools that will be attached to them howard university has a charter school let me ask y'all a question before we continue this conversation shout out to optimus prime optimus prime says uh when he builds a college i'll be a rust bucket <laughs> what school did umar johnson go to i just googled it apparently he went to the philadelphia uh college of osteopathic medicine uh let's see we're gonna go through his wikipedia let's go through the wikipedia really quickly omar johnson um early life school project book and documentary appearances early life and education looks like Graduated from Millersville University of Pennsylvania in 1997 with two bachelor's degrees, two bachelor's of arts and science degrees in psychology and political science. He graduated from the Philadelphia College. Of, is uh, Millersville University, is that an HBCU? I just always need to know the, the background of the people that's having the most to say. If it is dope. If it is dope, is Millersville University at HBCU? I'm guessing that it is. Y'all tell me in the chat, is Millersville University at HBCU? Um, Y'all saying no, hell no, nope, nope, no, nope, 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 nope. Why, why does he have never even heard of it, y'all petty? <laughs> <laughs> it's a private white institution. Not at all. So I'm just curious. Why is there so much to say and so much smoke for HBCUs? I largely don't have an opinion about the colleges themselves, but I do have an opinion when it comes to looking at things from a business perspective. Why is there so much smoke for HBCUs and being bougie just because they paid him for an appearance and to speak at their university? So they brought him in, paid him. He said he spoke at these universities. Hopefully he got paid for it. He got a fee. And then now he knows all of the university presidents and he can make an assessment on HBCUs. <laughs> Y'all a mess in the chat. Let's continue, man. Howard University has a charter school. I'm assuming it's still functioning. Howard University has a charter school. I assume it's still functioning. All the HBCUs should have a charter school or a private school. Why? Because one of the big problems for HBCUs is enrollment. One of the big problems for the HBCU is enrollment. You want to know how you solve enrollment? Have a high school that feeds directly into the college. This is not rocket science. If you have a thousand students, in your HBCU high school, those thousand students will go directly into your HBCU after graduation. This is not rocket science. 
The problem is the presidents of these HBCUs are not thinking about the future of the HBCU. The president of the HBCU is not thinking about the future of the HBCU. So number one, every HBCU should have a school. Why doesn't your education department have a school? Come on, HBCUs. If y'all die, black America dies. If y'all die, black America dies. So every HBCU needs a school. Number two, every HBCU needs a farm. What the fuck is he talking about, bro? Y'all got to excuse me. Sometimes I get stressed out when I'm watching these videos and I try to listen. I'm making a. <laughs> I ain't going to never land a Dr. Umar Johnson interview if I keep going at this rate. I'm never going to land a Dr. Umar Johnson interview if I keep going at this rate. What the hell is happening here? I really do. I want to interview him. I want to have him on the platform. But it's looking bleak. Because every time that I pull up a video that I want to review that I haven't seen before, he starts talking this God body nonsense. Yes, a farm is a bad idea. Listen, 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 listen. This is not Walmart. This is not Walmart. Colleges are not supposed to have farms. Do you even understand farming? Do you understand that most farmers are in debt and they subsidized by the federal government in order to even be able to grow crops? Have y'all ever heard of uh, Monsanto? Y'all ever heard of Monsanto? Y'all know anything about that? Y'all know about... A community garden. A large community garden that can provide crops to the entire black community that's closest to the HBCU. You <laughs> Fuck it, I... What the hell are we talking about, bro? What are we talking about? I thought he was... Y'all keep, keep... I was about to say stop sending me this. Y'all keep these Umar Johnson videos keep coming. Uh, keep it techies. Keep it techies says some HBCUs do have private high schools attached to them. Southern University has Southern U University Laboratory School. Cool, I think that that's awesome. That that makes sense for whatever it is that they are doing from a recruitment process uh, in order to boost enrollment also. What the hell are we talking about as far as these farms and providing food for the community? What are you talking about? Oh, I'm so, I honestly, I'm genuinely confused. And I don't even know how to break this down. I don't even know how to assess this. Taking care of diet? You taking care of health? You teaching children how to grow? You teaching the community how to grow? And you're raising money. And you're raising money for the HBCU. Most of you were started as agricultural institutions. Most HBCUs always had an agricultural and technical component. So where is the community farm for the HBCU? Dante Harris says, bro, a lot of school have farms, bro. Okay, name them and then tell me why they got farms. I'm open to the possibility that I'm wrong, but I very much doubt it. I very much doubt the the You start a fucking farm. This is why he can't be See, he thought that he couldn't be university president because they just won't let a black man that is pro black come into the university. No, they don't do it because this is foolish. And nobody understands business and nobody is looking at it from a business perspective. When you're trying to compete, the first thing you have to do is identify what your competition is doing. And then you have to separate yourself by 
figuring out what makes you unique while also capitalizing off of what happens from the competition, right? So for example, if I'm a school, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to understand exactly what these other schools are doing. What they're doing is that they're starting to market themselves by putting together the right programs that allow for these universities to be able to market to the right kids. So one of the, one of the ways in which universities, and I've worked at public universities, I understand it from a UX perspective and I look at it from a business perspective because I have close ties still to people that are high up in certain positions. One of the ways that they do so is that they, work, they market themselves to the international community. The international community brings in significant amount of dollars because of A, they pay more and higher for tuition while not, depending on the federal government as far as loans and Pell Grants and things like that, in order to be able to, you know, come to the university. B, when you get out of state tuition, you make more money. Everybody knows that there's a difference between um, in-state versus out-of-state, the tuition costs, and then also international students. Mark, marketing yourself to the best and the brightest from international students are, is necessary in order for you to be able to be successful. And I am live. Yes, this is live. Shout out to you. This is live. This is the second part because my other live stream got cut off, but we back. The third thing is that you have to start to find programs that people want. What do women want? What do men want? What are the fields in which people are being super successful? STEM fields? Cool. And I was using an example from 30 to 40 years ago and that the universities continue to change and evolve and market themselves to A, champion the football programs, champion the sports programs that are drawn in the most visitors, which then gives them more marketing dollars from the TV and the sponsors, and then also makes them more marketable to the general public at large because a lot of people are not even familiar with a lot of these HBCUs unless you live in a certain community or you are in that area in which you raise by them that allows for you to get more visibility and a recruit the type of students from for enrollment the next thing that you have to do and again i'm breaking this down from a business perspective to help y'all to understand and look at this thing properly the next thing that you have to do is then to start going into programs that people want when i jump on these coaching calls on a regular basis and the thing that i hear from people is that yo I looked at going to this particular school, but they don't allow for me to really be able to be successful because they don't have the programs, nor do they have the structure that allows for me to be able to take these classes online, do a hybrid, go into the campus, and they don't even support this particular industry or this particular field. They don't have enough staff. They're not actually marketing themselves. The school is not big enough, and I don't even see a track record for where these schools were successful as far as the students that went into the, into a lot of these STEM fields and these particular fields that allow for people to be successful as far as what people are looking for from universities in order to be successful. If you want to be great, and I've seen a lot of y'all had posts, hey, this school got a firm, this school got a firm. How many of y'all are actually enrolling in a, in, a, in a school because they got a firm? Shout out to Ray, uh, Ray Brinson. I appreciate you for the two ball. How many of y'all are going into a school because they have a farm? It's at a very basic fundamental level, right? At a very basic fundamental level, business is the same across the board, right? If you want to partner with somebody, then you partner with major corporations that would then allow you to be a feeder school and then you can market yourself and say, you come through this program, we can then get you an apple. That would make you much more successful. If you come through this program and you market to the parents, not the students. You market to the parents, not the, the parents are the ones that sell the students. The alumni are the ones that sell the students. You start to market to a lot of these different places such as um, these sororities and these fraternities. They're going to be the people that recommend these universities that allow for people to then become more successful. The thing that I see happening in communities so much, which is the dumbest thing that I ever seen, is that they say black owned business. Now we know that you are a black owned business, but when you say that you separate yourself and you alienate potential customers that can come in and give you business. Cool, you're a black owned business. 
Why would you then separate yourself as far as marketing to the, to the general public that would then patronize you and give you more money? Just sell black shit. Nike do it. They sell it and you become a walking billboard for all of the stuff. All of these other companies learn how to market more effectively and subtly so that they can then mark so that they can then have you be the billboard for what it is that they're going to start to push out to the general public. You don't see a a a Chinese business saying I'm Chinese owned and I'm like I'm only marketing myself because we in Chinatown and I'm surrounded by majority Chinese people and I sell Chinese food. I'm a Chinese owned business. Or I'm a white-owned business. It's the dumbest thing ever. You can be a black-owned business, but not alienate the customers, which is the exact same thing that HBCUs do. You're marketing yourself to 13.6% of the population. Why are you marketing yourself? Why aren't you just Jackson State? We know that you're an HBCU, but you need to recruit other people that allows for you to be more successful. Such, why would an international student, a person that's all, all the way over in China, come over here to go to a HBCU? You can't even market yourself effectively. So what he's advocating for you to do is market yourself to the, to the lowest of the low. And if we've known anything from a marketing perspective, we understand that black people don't want to necessarily be associated with the lowest of the low. He's saying that, yo, only go into these communities that's the needy and only go to people that's going to need a bunch of Pell Grants and student loans in order to be able to go to your school. That's what he's saying, translation from my perspective. If we know anything about marketing is that people want to be attached to the thing that's the most successful. Even if you're looking at a car, the car that they put on display and the car that they put in the press is not the one that they're going to sell the majority of. They're going to sell you a whole lot of Camrys and a whole lot of Accords and a whole lot of Malibus and a whole lot of this and a whole lot of that. They're going to sell you a ton of Volkswagen Passats. But their halo car, the halo car, the Volkswagen group owns Porsche, Lamborghini. Huh? Talk to me. BMW owns Rolls Royce. They're marketing you the 7 Series, the Rolls Royce Ghost, the Phantom. That's the halo car. You want to be the. The car that everybody aspires to buy, you want to be the university that every, everybody, listen, here in Michigan, shout out to the MSU people, I love y'all, I appreciate y'all, but let's be clear, Michigan is the gold standard, University of Michigan is the gold standard, most of the people that go to Michigan State wanted to go to Michigan, that is a fact, shout out to my MSU people, but I just got to be real, you couldn't get in, you couldn't get in. Didn't mean you didn't want to be there. Michigan State get what Michigan can't do because Michigan has uh, uh, marketed themselves both from a sports perspective and every other metric that is measurable in the United States of America by other colleges when compared to other Michigan schools as a top tier school. Academics, alumni, what it is that they do as far as uh, um, um, STEM, STEM field, I'm just telling you, this is marketing 101. You don't market yourself to the lowest common denominator. You market yourself to the people that actually can't really afford you, which then allows for them to aspire to get to you. And you do that by, by doing a plethora of different things. Why do you think that when, when the pandemic opened up, and if you go to any big mall right now, if you go to any big mall right now, you know what the stores is going to be out the door? It ain't going to be Walmart. It ain't going to be Hanes. It ain't Abercrombie and Fitch. It ain't Foot Locker unless it's on release day in which they ain't even got nothing no more. You know where they lined up out the door? Where they don't give you a discount. Gucci, Louis, Balenciaga, Saks Fifth, busting down the doors. 
They busting down the doors. People want the thing that other people want. You know what women go for? They go for the men that other women want. Women is not going for the dude that's readily available saying, hey, can you please pick me? Women are going for the dude that other women either already got or other women want. Whatever that is, however he marketed himself. Do I need to give you a lesson in business one-on-one? Because just because you are a blackity black does not necessarily mean that you understand how to look at things from a business perspective and market yourself more effectively. It's the same across the board. Schools, business, relationships, it's all the same. People all go to the big church. The bunch of little churches in, in, that's readily available that you can actually go up and talk to the pastor, they ain't trying to go there. They want to go to T.D. Jake's, the potter's house, and they want to possibly get close to and give all of their money and make a donation in order to have T.D. Jake say, look at you, you're a good steward of this church. If you want to market yourself as a university, you have to rethink and completely redo what it is that you do. People trying to figure out why Colorado State gave $30 million to Deion Sanders. All you got to do is look at the recruiting and the, the, the portals now. Look at everybody trying to transfer over there. Look at the visibility. Colorado, Colorado could not have bought better press, more visibility, and a better steward of their football program. And then they told you, they said, we ain't even came up with the money yet that we're going to pay them, but we're going to get it because they understood that investing in the thing that makes them more marketable is going to be the thing that gives them better return on their money. But you thought that they was giving him $30 million just because they liked him? They giving him $30 million because they looking to get a $300 million return on their investment. That's a fact. But you so busy looking at it in the weeds because you so stuck on blackity black that you can't understand that this is a class and a money game. If you want to help your people, if you want to help your community, you need to look at things from a business perspective. They not worried about you mobilizing. They not worried about your protests. They not worried about your outrage. You know why? Because you ain't got no power. You ain't got no money and you so you sure don't understand how to look at things from a business perspective, which makes you nothing. You are nothing but a voice, an ant that could be squashed at any time. Nobody cares. Nobody cares unless you put in, unless you understand how to look at things from a business perspective. You cannot be a university president and you can't possibly fathom how to run one. He talking about a fucking firm. How many people is going to a, a, a HBCU because they... Come on, HBCUs. If y'all die, black America dies. If y'all die, black America dies. So every make sure y'all hit a like for the, this is part two. I, my other stream got cut off. Make sure y'all hit a like for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to the channel. Turn on your notifications. And also on top of that, make sure you tap into the Patreon. This is real game here. Every HBCU needs a school. Number two, every HBCU needs a farm a community garden, a large community garden that can provide crops to the entire black community that's closest to the HBCU. You taking care of diet, you taking care of health, you teaching children how to grow, you teaching the community how to grow and you're raising money. And you're raising money for the HBCU. Most of you were started as agricultural institutions. And you have to evolve Most and change or die. Evolve, change, or die. HBCUs always had an agricultural and technical component. So where is the community farm for the HBCU? The farm and the garden. You should have your own organic chickens. Shout out to... <laughs> Shout out to Christopher Williams for the $1 cash app. Says, uh, definitely inspired by your channel, bro. Thank you, my friend. We cooking over here. 
own organic turkeys, your own organic cows. You should be oh, raising your own fish. Nice. You should have your own vegetables, your own fruit. Come on, HBCUs. This is not rocket science. Come on, HBCUs. This is not rocket science. Is this show, is this show King? Come on, HBCUs. This is not rocket science. Third thing every HBCU should have. Every HBCU should have a credit union or a bank. Every HBCU should have a credit union or a bank. Curious. I just so happen to understand banking because I've been in banking uh, for close to 10 years now. Curious to, curious to know, guys. Curious to know, guys. What are the requirements for, for, for owning a bank? What are the requirements for owning a bank? Curious. How do you think that these endowments are, ma are managed? You know, let me get through this so I can get to the Kyrie thing. And you should have a campaign to have all of the black people in the neighborhood where your school is take their money out of the white bank and put it into the HBCU's credit union or bank. Are y'all following me, brothers and sisters? Brothers, if you with me, give me... Yo, you know how many people is probably watching this like, power to the people, banking. Banking power to the people. Power to the people is the banking thing, yeah. You know how many people is probably rah rah this? I, sh I wish I could... Oh, Jesus Christ. If this, ladies, if you with me, give me a heart. Brothers, if I'm making sense to you, give me a fist. Ladies, if I'm making sense to you, <laughs> give me a heart. <laughs> we talk about Black Wall Street. Oh, we talking about Black Wall Street. Oh, my God. Do you know every HBCU is a potential Black Wall Street? Oh, my God. Do you realize Jesus every Christ. HBCU is a potential Black Wall Street? Every HBCU should have a bank. And nobody's going to question what you're doing with the money because we can see it. Nobody's going to question what you're doing with the money because we can see it. Nobody's going to question an HBCU for what they're doing with the bank or credit union money because we can see it with our own two eyes. Come on, HBCUs. You need a school, you need a farm and garden, and you need a bank. You need a school, you need a farm and garden, and you need a bank. Yo, you know what the wild thing is about this whole situation? You know what the wild thing is about this situation? Is that um, when I first came across Dr. Umar Johnson, I thought that he was incredibly intelligent. I said, now this guy is able to deba debate effectively because I had caught a video, and this was years, and probably a decade ago. I had caught a video where he was like, doing like some kind of speaking engagement in like a room or a town hall and somebody had approached him with regard to his thoughts on uh, homosexual activity or something like that and he was able to like debate it effectively. Am I not like, in hindsight it's like, yo, did I, can somebody send me that video again so I can read, look at it because maybe I missed something. You know what I'm saying? Like, as you get older and you become more mature and you got a lot more insight and you understand things a little bit differently, now you're starting to look at things and question stuff that you thought was dope back in the day. And it's like, was I, did I, what, what was I thinking? Come on, HBCUs. See, this hurts my heart because I start thinking about St. Paul's College mm. that we could have had. Interesting. This hurts my heart because I start thinking about St. Paul's College in Lawrenceville, Virginia, that we should have had. Yeah, I got This you. hurts my heart because I start thinking about St. Paul's College mm. in Lawrenceville, Virginia, three times. that we should have had, three. brothers and sisters. Three is, three is, three is the uh, They only number. wanted $2 million. Mm, they only wanted St. $2 million. St. Paul's College wanted $2 million, only two. and I couldn't raise that. Now, there was a lot of coonery and buffoonery that was involved in that. What does he have in his hand? We know that you could. 
<laughs> you was gonna buy the school, huh? Interesting. A lot of coons tried to sabotage me because we don't like to see each other win, brothers and sisters on uh, Facebook. They didn't Instagram want to see block me. But brothers and sisters on Facebook, black people don't like to see each other win. Uh, and the reason we have a problem seeing each other win is slavery convinced us only one black person can succeed at a time. Interesting. Let me say it again. Hmm. Let That's why they didn't want you to talk win. about the psychology you. of slavery. Ah. The psychology of slavery convinced us to believe only one slave can make it to freedom at a time. Hmm. That's what we were taught. The white power structure convinced us to believe that only one African can make it at a time. That's, this, the way That's what we again. believe. Okay, cool. That's so, what we believe. So listen, 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 guys. We have been conditioned to believe. Okay, all right. I, I've seen enough. I've seen enough here. Listen, guys. Um, uh, I would like for you guys to um, make a more informed decision as to how it is that you align yourself with the right type of people so that you can get the, the, the best... And, and brightest information and you can become great this ain't it this ain't it ladies and gentlemen we got to do better um just because you know black power and you've read the torah doesn't necessarily you mean you know mean you know how to run a major university or even be able to open up a school for that matter no pun intended all right so shout out to the the koofy, the goofy, whatever you want to call this. This is insane, all right?